Hi everyone, thanks for joining today. Uh, today's uh, session, we're gonna cover uh, G Suite administration. So we're gonna go over the basics of how we set up a, a Google administration console um, in, and in particular, a education environment as well. Here's a result. So, uh, sorry, my phone's just gone off. So first of all, I'd just like to introduce our team if you weren't on the call before. <clears throat> um, to introduce myself, my name is Richard Johnson. I'm an education solutions engineer. Uh, with me today, I've got Chris Betcher, who just left the call. Um, he's the adoption lead for um, Asia Pacific. Then we have Kimberly Hall and Brent Sava, who work across uh, the different states and territories of Australia. So today, I'm gonna to cover a couple of things. Um, I'm gonna go through the basics of what is Google for Education, uh, talk about how do we get into our console and what does that look like, the core services that we should be enabling and additional services go through a few uh, G Suite management basics that we should be turning on. Uh, I'll talk about Chromebooks for, us for a little bit as well, um, and then any other support going forward. So hopefully I'll be able to get it all within uh, 25 minutes. Um, I do ask, since we have um, quite a number of people in this call, um, if you do have questions, please leave them in the chat on the right-hand side, um, and the team will try and answer them as best as possible, and we'll see if we can get around to them at the end as well. So just to quickly cover off, and, I, and if you're on the last call, Chris mentioned this before, <clears throat> but G Suite for Education comprises of a number of tools within it, uh, things such as Google Docs, Drive Sheets, uh, Mail, uh, Meets, the call technology that you're on today, Google Classroom, which is very popular in schools, um, and of course, the Admin Console, which um, if you're an administrator at a G Suite school, you'd be pretty familiar with. We also have uh, Chromebooks for Education, so these are devices uh, that uh, schools take up in order to uh, access these technologies in a quick and easy manner. And we'll talk about them later. I wanted to put this up on the screen because this is a, this is a very interesting ratio. And this is a ratio that came out of Gartner um, a couple of years ago. And the, this is the ideal ratio of the number of end users to IT staff or number of students to an administrator. Now, this 70 to 1 ratio obviously doesn't make sense in education. There's no way that you can have a school that has 70 users to one IT administrator. It would have to be a lot, lot more. And so when we designed the Google for Education admin console and the system around it, we had to design it so it was easily scalable and accessible to be able to manage a lot more than the 70 to 1 ratio. So I'll go through today what the admin console looks like, how you're gonna access it. It's a very, very easy to use system. Uh, to simply get in there, you either go to admin.google.com or you can click the admin logo in your nine square app menu. So if you're in any of your G Suite products today, whether that's mail, drive, calendar, you'll see in the top right-hand corner that you have a little nine square grid. If you click on that, you'll see that there is a little admin icon if you do have access to the admin console. Okay, so we're gonna go through a couple of things on how to set up your domain properly from scratch. So there's a couple of key concepts that we need to go through today, and one of them being your organizational structure. This is the core of how policies are going to be applied and who sits in which bucket. We're gonna look at how we create administrators, so whether that be custom administrator roles or whether that be standard administrator roles that we've set for you. How do we add users, whether that be a manual sync or an automatic one? We'll talk through some of the G Suite services that we see across a lot of schools, some that are turned on, some that are turned off. We'll also talk about all the additional services that we see in there as well. And lastly, I'll go through a bit of domain security as that seems to be a very hot topic across the globe at the moment. So first of all, what are organizational units? If you think of organizational units as buckets, they're literally buckets of people or groups of schools that you can structure out so that you can apply policies and settings to. So if you have a look at the example on the, on the right hand side of my screen here, you can see that if you have a multi-school tenant or multiple regions within a tenant, then you can set it up as the um, picture describes here. If you're using a single school, then you can move further over to the right hand side and you can use that structure under your main level. Uh, this is very important to have these set up from the start 
um, as this provides a lot of granularity to, into what sort of policies can be applied. Uh, for example, if I wanted to apply a policy or a service to uh, a particular group, such as grade three at a, at a school, I would need to make sure that grade three are in their own little bucket um, away from the rest of the school so that that wouldn't apply to everyone else. As I go through these, I'll also, um, I'm gonna jump back into the admin console and I'm gonna show you live as to what this looks like as well. Okay, so who manages your domain? So this is a very interesting one. This is how we build uh, administrators. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. First thing to note is that we have uh, what we call a super admin access within the Google for Admin console. Super admin means these are people that are privileged to access anything and pretty much everything within your console. And they can provide admin access to everyone else as well. Um, a lot of schools and education facilities use these as either a break fix or they use it as the um, single account in case something goes wrong. We've got custom administrator roles and delegated admin roles. So if you control multiple schools or you have multiple admins across different facilities, you can apply admin access so that they can only touch settings um, and policies that affect those individual schools without, the, without any, touching anyone else's uh, privileges. When we look at provisioning and managing users, there's a couple of options here that you can do for the Google for Education tenant. First one is the manual creation of a user identity. It's very slow, but very ad hoc, um, very flexible for you to use. We have the ability to also upload a CSV. So if you're looking at under 100 users and you're only looking at doing a one-time sync, then a CSV upload is a pretty good way of doing it. A couple of more scalable ways, especially if you're looking at more than uh, 100 or anywhere up to thousands of users, you can use a, an item called Google Cloud Directory Sync. Now, Google Cloud Directory Sync is a tool that can be used to result. sync um, all your identities across from Active Directory. Um, they can sync not only the user IDs, but also the org units as well as groups. Uh, there's some other tools that, uh, that you, you can use out there. Um, you can use our uh, administration API, our Google um, Admin API, or a tool called GAN. And this is a line based, um, command line based tool that can be used to sync users across as well. So plenty of options out there if you need to manage students all the way from one or two people, all the way up to thousands of people. There's a few core services out there, which I'm gonna jump into the admin console and show you. I uh, just wanna let you know that core services, are, G Suite core services are governed by the Google for Education Terms of Services. So this is the agreement that you sign right at the start when you set up a domain. Uh, these services are designed to be um, education based in your tenant and they follow those terms. When we look at additional services, try to think things such as YouTube, um, Google Earth, these sort of tools are uh, consumer grade tools. And while we do offer them as part of the Google for Education tenant, they do sit outside the Google for Education agreement. So I'm now gonna jump into the admin console and I'm gonna run through a couple of things. So welcome to the Google for Education console. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you where you can find all of your organizational units. If you have a look in here, you can see that all the units that I've got, apologies, I'm gonna to have to sign in again. One of our security protocols is that the uh, admin console signs out after a certain amount of time. So you can see here, I've got an example of what um, OU structures look like. If you remember from the picture that I showed you, you can structure your organizational units in exactly the same way. And I'll show you how policies are applied. I'm gonna jump back to the home screen. And I'm gonna jump into applications. So if you remember, I spoke about G Suite core applications and they can be found in your application menu. And you can see the list here. Now what we find is that most services are turned on for education facilities. The ones that we find that are usually turned off across most education facilities are uh, Google Chats or classic chats. Uh, this is an instant messaging service and uh, sometimes schools can find this a little bit distracting for uh, students. However, they turn it on for teachers. 
one of the key policies that is always good to check uh, before uh, turning on a service like this is your sharing settings across Google Drive. So Google Drive being able to share any documents or anything you upload into it uh, needs to have some careful consideration on who you can share those files with. So you have a couple of options here when sharing uh, documents around your domain and outside of your domain. First of all, you can turn on so that your domain can share with anyone outside of Google for, uh, outside of your Google for Education tenant. The other option is you can turn that off altogether so you can keep all of your files internally and no one can share at all. The third option is you can actually whitelist domains. So if you have any sister schools out there or if you have any other schools that you work closely with, then you can whitelist these domains so you can turn on that sharing ability. This also comes into effect when you're talking about using Google Classroom within your environment. You can whitelist those as well. I'm going to jump back here for a second. And I'm going to jump into Google Classroom. So Chris mentioned a couple of things before, and this is around things such as guardian access. So this is where you can turn on your settings for um, allowing parents and guardians to access um, or to receive um, guardian emails from Google Classroom. So Classroom is a two-step process for turning on guardian. One, you have to set it in your domain, and also as part of the classroom, the teacher has to enable it as well. Let's jump back out, and I'm going to have a look at Google Vault. So Google Vault is one of our security, um, one of our security suite settings. It is a retention tool so that you can retain all sorts of data. Now I'm going to switch over to the Google Vault screen, and I'm going to show you what you can store. So you can see here that you can actually share things such as you can actually store Mail Drive, Groups, Chat and meet. It's highly suggested that you use this service. So this is a service that can retain messages. It's not a full on backup service. It's not designed to restore things back into Google Drive or any other any other place, but it allows you to download and export uh, any information that a user has either deleted on purpose or by accident. Once you have once you run these legal holds or reports within uh, Google Vault, you have the ability for to export them for up to 15 days. After that period of time, the export will wipe itself and you'll need to run the legal hold again. Okay, I'm going to jump back into Google, back into the Google Admin Console. I'm going to go back to the home screen. Another one of our security settings that I'd like to talk about is what we call DLP. So DLP is data loss prevention, and this is actually a this is actually a designed engine that actually was run um, many many years ago in the enterprise space for the purposes of picking up uh, what we call PCI or credit card information. Uh, since then, it has been expanded so it can pick up um, PII data or personal information, such as Medicare numbers, full names, all sorts of uh, information. And in here today, you can put any rules that you would like. So for example, we've seen Drive DLP being used across many schools to pick up things such as cyberbullying terms. Or if you use student numbers in your schooling system, you can see when a student number is being used in a document rather than a name. So all these sort of things are preventional measures that you can use uh, as part of your security system. I'll also want to show you some advanced features that are coming as part of G Suite Enterprise for Education. And this is a service that Chris mentioned before, and Brent will probably show you a little bit more later on. If we jump into the security section, and just a reminder that not everyone will have this. Uh, if you're running the G Suite standard education version, then you may not be able to see this. If you're running the enterprise version, you will be able to see this. One of the great new tools that we've introduced is the investigation tool. Now, this investigation tool allows you to search a lot, a lot of items. It's designed to be an audit tool. It's supposed to be post-event. 
So if an event occurs in which, for example, we want to check on a document that has been shared externally, I can check on this. So I can say that a drive event where the visibility is shared externally. Now I can add multiple actions to this, uh, multiple conditions. These conditions you can define down to date and time, actors. You can continue to add more and more onto this. I can also group them as well by those same conditions. For the moment, I'm just going to run a search on this. So you'll see that I've run a search and I've actually found Chris's document, Why is Melbourne the Best in the World? And he shared this a lot of times. So what I can actually do is I can click on this and I can click Actions and I can audit the file permissions. This is going to take me to another screen and I'm going to see his user, just in time, has been, shared, has been shared this document and I don't believe he's the right person to. Or I can see all these other ones as well. So I can go in here and I can actually set the access and I can remove it or I can change the access level. So this is a really great tool to be using as part of your audit arsenal. Okay. I'm going to quickly show you some administration features. So I mentioned before that there's quite a number of admin roles. Rich, you just need to share your screen again. It just, uh, I think you oh, closed the up. tab. Yep, closed the tab. Thanks, Chris. So I mentioned before that there's quite a number of administration roles, and I mentioned super admin roles. Again, super admin roles are break fix roles. They're roles that have permissions across every single aspect of the Google Admin Console. But you can see here, we've set some standard roles as well. So user administration, help desk, services, classroom, all sorts of them. We can also create delegated admin roles. So you can see here, I've got, I've got a few people assigned, but I can assign it to an OU level. And this is why I mentioned that OU levels are very important at the start, because it defines who has control over what. Okay, additional services. So I mentioned this before, these are all uh, right next to your core services. You'll see, see the icon similar to this. Once you click on there, you'll be able to turn those services on and off for your domain. In essence, most services, additional services are turned off for education. However, you can switch them on to your liking. I mentioned before Google Vault, investigation tool. But one last thing that I wanted to talk about on the security front was two-factor authentication. And this is a very, very important for administrators out there. So two-factor authentication gives you that extra protection uh, for logging into your account. It stops unauthorized access. And in the scenario where an administrator is sitting at their computer typing in their username and password and someone is standing behind them, and this can be a teacher or a student as we've found out in the past, this extra level can actually stop that unauthorized access. So I mentioned Chromebooks before. So Chromebooks are lightweight, easy to use devices. They have uh, quite a long battery life on them uh, in terms of duration all day. Uh, the minimum hours that we've seen is around about eight and they can go all the way up to 16 hours. So they're quite a long lasting device. And they boot up in less than 10 seconds. So very, very helpful for a class that is trying to get all their computers up and running in the morning. You're ready to go at the start. This is just to show you a map of how Chromebooks came about across the world. And as you can see, they've scaled quite tremendously over the last couple of years. Part of having Chromebooks in school is what we call the Chrome Education Upgrade. What the Chrome Education Upgrade license does is it gives you access to control these devices and manage all of the policies and settings that go across these devices. It also allows you to have 24 seven support on your fleet of devices. I'll talk about support at the end and give you the options of how you can be supported as an administrator as well. When we look at devices and how we manage, they're split up into four different areas, user policies, device policies, apps and extensions, and then fleet management. So again, we produced this console so it was easy, to, easy for you to use and a nice graphical user interface for everyone else.
I'm going to quickly show you what that looks like. I know we've got four minutes left. I've clicked on device management and you can see that all my Chromebooks can sit up here. And you can see the asset inventory list that I've got. And if I jump into here, I've got managed browsers. Oh, apologies, I clicked on the wrong one. I can go into settings and I can go user browser settings on the left hand side, devices and manage guest sessions as well. So user and browser settings are going to be the main ones that you're going to need to look into as well as devices. And there's quite a few that uh, options you can select from. The devices section also runs based off OUs. So you can only apply settings based on OUs at the moment for the emails. Let me jump back to this screen. When we introduced Chromebooks for Education, we made sure that they were extra secure. We looked at the market and we saw we needed to make something that was easy to use, updates well, keeps everyone safe. So our four pillars of security are automatic updates. So every six to eight weeks, a Chromebook will receive an update. Our sandboxing environment means that any web pages that you have open or any tabs you have open on your device do not talk to each other. So if you're doing your online banking at the same time as your online shopping, your credit card information isn't going to flow across. This also applies to any users you have on the device as well. We have a number, we have two operating systems that sit on top of a Chromebook. We have a second, we have a primary and a secondary. When the primary boots, if there is any corruption involved, it, the device will shut down and boot the secondary OS. While the secondary OS is booting, it will fix the primary and, re, and on restart, it will swap them back around. We also have data encryption built in, so 128-bit encryption on the drive. This means that if you pull the drive out and try and plug it in any other source, it will be unreadable. So we built them to be very, very secure. Okay, we've got a couple of minutes left. Before, I, before we talk about the guide and how we go through this, I want to show you the support options that you have. So again, I'm jumping back to my Google for, Google for Education tenant. And if I click on support, it pops up a new window. From here, I can click on contact support and I select what I want, to, what I want help with and it will give me three options. So you'll be able to do instant chat which you get a very, very quick response time from. You can do a phone call in which you'll be provided a PIN number to provide the operator, or you can do it over email. Again, with all of our systems, we provide 24 seven support. So please, if you run into any issues or any troubles, please use our support lines as much as possible. Okay, and lastly, We've got a few quick guides that we can go through. So one of the quick guides is on how to set up. I can show you this link here. If you type into Google, Google search engine, uh, quick startup guide for Google for education, this will come up. This will give you a quick eight steps on how to set up your domain and link off to the various support articles to give you more information. So please use this as your reference guide if you are setting up any domains in the future. Was awesome, Rich. Um, that was awesome. Um, I'm just, there's a question in the chat from Zach who wanted to know, is there a way for the admin to override the sharing of a user's Google Drive items once a security issue has been found? And especially if you can do that in bulk. Sorry, so just referring to I think refer he's referring to the, um, the, the, uh, the, the investigation tool you were talking about before. Sure, yep. So the way that you would handle that is that you would first of all remove access from that file using the investigation tool. Um, if you thought that that individual um, was uh, adding more files or they deemed to be um, going against the terms and conditions of the use of these products for your school, then you could suspend the user in the console as well. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, uh, Chris mentioned before that feedback is a gift. And so uh, if you do have time, we'd love you to fill out the feedback form here. Uh, there's also a number of courses as administrators that you can uh, go to. Uh, Google Cloud Certified 
Collaboration Engineer is one of them. If you're a G Suite user or a G Suite administrator, this is a great course to do. We also have a Chrome admin exam that you can go to as well. So I know we're at time. So if you have any other questions, please let me know, write them in the chat and we'll answer them as best we can.